Give the band a round of applause. These guys sounded good. Some very talented musicians. All three of these band members have been in town for so long playing with various bands all over the state, everywhere. So great job, guys. It's good to see y'all once again. It's been too dang long. Uh, Kurt, last time we saw each other, it was 112 degrees in Sweet Home, Oregon. Yeah, it was a problem, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I have to tell you the funniest story. Uh, for the last two years at the Oregon Jamboree, now I have extra security on me thanks to you. Because, wow. Yeah, because it was so hot that day that the, the amps were blowing up on the stage. Literally, everything was shutting down. And you guys dressed in all black, mm -hmm. which made it like 120. Yeah. Now it was crazy. But I remember you invited, you're like, you, I was having like a heat moment. I was starting to like melt down. And you're like, dude, get on the bus. And I started running. And security was like thinking I was crashing the party. <laughs> and you're like, he's known to do that though. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's be honest. It's not the first time. Don't tell anybody. But uh, literally, so now the last year, it's like, uh, who is that? That's Danny Dwyer. Make sure you keep yeah, an eye yeah, on that yeah. guy. Yeah, I'm you're like the eagle. Yeah. Eagle has landed. I'm yeah. the skinny guy. I'm not beat up. That's six foot five. It's yeah, like crashing yeah. Lee, Lee Bryce's bus, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I'm. So, well, you're welcome. Maybe kind Thank of. Thank you. Mean, Thank at you. At least you're safe now. I am safe. Thank <laughs> you very much. Yeah, it's good. Good to see you. Uh, for those that don't know, Kurt, we've known each other for ten years in the band. We've known each other through multiple bands for years and years and years. Um, he was also a Washington County Sheriff. So thank you for your service. Hillsborough Hill PD. Yeah, Hillsborough PD. PD. Yeah. Hillsborough PD. In Washington County, though. So yeah, yeah, in Washington. Point. I was yeah. close. <laughs> yeah. Aren't they all the same? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but thank you for your service. We know. appreciate it. Thank you. What is what is a harder job for you? Is it a, being a police officer or a songwriter now? Oh, well, being a cop was, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're getting shot at and doing stuff. So. Yeah, that's no fun. Yeah, that's no fun. But, uh, yeah, I mean, being a songwriter... The, the the difference is is the inconsistency of payment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been an issue a few times, you know. So there's that. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, I'm so blessed to be able to play music and write music because before the shooting, I was in a really bad shooting in 2009, and before that, I wasn't a cop. I mean, I wasn't a musician. Right. And so after that, that's when I started playing music, and you know, you don't know what you're doing. It's just like when you start to do anything, you don't know what you don't know how to build a house until you build a house. You right. Know, you just got to start doing it. And so to think that I would be making a living writing music and playing music, it's unheard of. And so I'm very, very thankful, very blessed. Yeah. Yeah. It's your journey over the last 10 years has been incredible to me to watch because I've been helping you yeah. not taking credit for it in any sort of way. Oh, but like but we it was interesting to see because when you were making that transformation from a police officer to a songwriter, you're asking, okay, what's the next step? So I'm like, go to Nashville. You go to Nashville, you get a band, you get a backer, now you're writing songs. You're in this guitar pool, so your life is changing there. One of your biggest inspirations was Garth, and I saw the time that we took you to go see Garth in Tacoma, like something just came over you. You had like this aura. And since that day, your life has completely changed. Well, you know, what's funny is um, we I had like five minutes alone with Garth, you know, like not alone, but you guys were like about 10 right. feet away. And so I told him, I'm like, my goal is to open for you. And I had a CD of my music, but I just chickened out. I didn't give it to him. I should have. I still <laughs> regret not doing that. And Scott Mahalik was like, you, well, I'm not going to tell you what he called me, but yeah. um, <laughs> I was like, Chicken. dang, I should have I gave it to him. Because it is, you know, Garth has been a huge insp inspiration for me forever. Right. Of and course. So, and it was right before COVID and all that good stuff happened. And I was still on probation with the Dallas Police Department. And so when Garth's like, yeah, I told him, I'm like, I want to open for you. He's like, and you know Garth. I mean, Garth is like legit. He's yeah. actually a oh, yeah. nice dude. Like he's not, you know, he's Fake. so normal. It's yes. crazy. And when I said my goal is to open for you someday, he's like, yeah, man, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And then he went to start, you know, whatever. And so that was the last I, I talked to Garth. And then COVID happened and all that good stuff. And yeah. then he played in Eugene. I grew up in Southern Oregon, but in middle school, I moved to Eugene. And then I played football at Oregon State. Go Beavs. Let's go. Yep. Yep. And then my last, uh, my last college, my home field in high school was Austin Stadium. My last game at Oregon State was at Austin Stadium. And wow. so knowing Garth's people, right, all the lawyers and stuff, I'm like peppering them. I'm like, let me open it. It will be an amazing story, you know, all that good yeah. stuff. Full circle moment. Yeah, I, dude, I honestly thought I was going to get it because they hadn't announced the opener for like until like a week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? I was praying. Then I found out. I don't even know who opened. It wasn't me. That's all I know. Right. I, I did get to sing in the choir, though. That was kind of cool. I do remember that. And, um, yeah, that, that was, was cool. Wild. That was awesome. I, I was the only one in a cowboy hat. That was kind of weird. But That's 
you, you know, stood out. It is what it is. Yeah, you yeah, stood out. You know out. what's crazy? I tell you what, walking into that stadium, because we did um, y- We Shall Be Free and yep. the, uh, the, the River. It was maybe, The River. Or something like I that. I remember and that. So, you know, we and we got to go do sound check with Garth, which was amazing the day before. Yep. And that was awesome. You were there. And uh, I walked, because, you know, I walked by. I'm like, Danny, what's up, Danny? He's like, okay, psycho. Like, He's Call fine. security for like, that yeah, guy. I know him, trust me. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. That whole thing was was an amazing time. So, Lord willing, I'll get to open for Garth at some point. Jimmy Maddenly, I've been talking to him, his fiddle player. Yeah, yeah. And I've been talking to him on Facebook and trying to get him to come out and do a show with us. So well, well the good news is he's almost done with the residency tours at yeah. Caesar's Palace. There's like six shows left, mm-hmm. and then he's going to start retouring again. He's going to yeah. be doing. You know, he's not retiring. He'll he's never too, stop. He's yeah. too young to retire, so he's going to do something. So maybe we'll all put some hey, good thoughts yeah. into Pray it. Pray it up, baby. Pray it up, right? All things are possible, baby. There you go. So you go to Nashville, you start songwriting, then you come back here, you start touring, and next thing you know. You're working with Cole Hauser, Rip from Yellowstone, because the band came and saw you guys at the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar in Montana, and now you've been touring with him, doing great things. How did that come about? Yeah, so we, you know, it's all luck. I mean, not, it's not all luck. You got to work your ass off, and then hopefully you'll get lucky. And the luck came by this guy needing a band for his wedding, and he was like, "Whoever's," and he was in Florida at the time. He said, "Whoever's playing the Cowboy Bar." Is good enough to play my wedding, and it happened to be us. It could have been anybody, but it right. happened to be us. And so we uh, connected. We, b- we played that show in Cheyenne, Wyoming that summer. And then about a month after the wedding, I saw Cole post something on his Facebook page saying, looking forward to hanging out with you at your wedding in s- or at, at this get-together for Tunnels to Towers in Sun Valley. And so we were playing in Boise the night before. <laughs> So I text, Rob is his name, I text him real quick. I'm like, bro, we're playing in Boise the night before. Can I come out and play a show for Tunnels and Towers and meet Cole? Because I wanted to meet Cole. Because I've looked like this, for the record, way longer before the Yellowstone you, I can attest was, that. Yes. was out. And w- actually, when the, when the show started first started, especially in like Wyoming at the Cowboy Bar, people would be like, you know you look like Rip? And I'm like, I, who the hell's Rip? Like, right. I don't know what that is. This could be bad thing, no. Because right? if he's a weirdo, that's not great for <laughs> me. <anyway. laughs> but you're touring, so you're not ha- you're driving between the shows. Well, yeah, and so you know, my fiance and I started watching Yellowstone, and I saw his his character. I'm like, oh hell yeah, I I identify with Rip. And so when we started talking, you know, at this place in Sun Valley, we do a little <laughs> meet and greet. And just for you, so you know, when you open for somebody, you don't get to hang out with them. No. Like when you open for a headliner. You don't get to hang out with the headliner. Like, that's what I thought when I first started playing music. Like, ah, yeah. oh, you're going to be buddies and all that good stuff. Uh-uh. Because whoever plays last sound checks first. So when they're sound checking, they're sound checking really early in the morning. And you're not even awake yet. No. Well, well, I am. But, you know. And then by the time you get there, they're in the hotel or whatever doing all that stuff. So um, I thought it would be the same way with Cole. I thought we'd just go there. And we had a tour bus at the time. And so I thought we're just going to go do our thing. And so I met Cole, and the guy that introduced us, Rob, he's like, everybody calls this guy Rip. And Cole poked my stomach. He goes, you got to get rid of this bull beep before (laughs) you can call me Rip. I'm like, listen, man, come on, brother. (laughs) But then, you know, so the premise of these shows is people would pay a lot of money to hang out with Cole. There would be a meet and greet and then an auction and a dinner, and then we were the after party. So Cole's not a musician, but... Everywhere he goes, he wanted us to w- be with him. And so wow, it was an amazing experience. So we're, you know, again, back to the idea of not associating with the headliner. I didn't think that we were going to get to talk. I thought I'd go to meet him, and that's about it. And then we're sitting on a tour bus during the dinner, and the door opened. And I'm like, who the heck is that? Because the, the whole band was in the tour bus. Oh. And it was Cole. He walked up. He didn't want to have dinner with people because he doesn't like associating, you know, in a healthy way. Could you imagine? I mean, everybody wanted a piece of you. Right. So he he came in and we started b- BSing and um, he actually grew up in Southern Oregon until he was like nine. Really? Yeah, he lived in Ashland. Okay. And his dad, I played football at Oregon State, and his dad played football at Oregon State in the late sixties. Boom. Yeah. Hit. So as soon as like we started talking like that and uh, we just connected, you know, I mean, he's he's become a brother of mine and he's he's given us a a lot of opportunities. And when I was writing this new album, I wrote a song called "Can I Cuss on This or No?" Yeah. Okay. So I wrote a, I wrote a song. Uh, initially, it was called Cowboy Shit because you know we're a rowdy rodeo band. That's what we do, 
And I was trying to figure out, like, when you, when you start writing music, you got to figure out your brand and all that good stuff. And it's not as easy as it sounds. I, th I thought I would know, but then you start having to write it, and you're like, wow, man, this is tough. And then I heard the phrase cowboy shit, and I'm like, that kind of represents me. Like, let's just go do some cowboy shit. I mean, it doesn't make sense all the time, you know? <laughs> right. You just got to go and go do it. And I'm sure so my, my son probably loves to say that yeah, all the time. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, it's time to do some cowboy shit. And he's like, <laughs> okay, here we go. Hold on, boys. And so I sent that song to Cole, and he loved it. And he had just signed a deal to be the spokesperson for the Professional Bull Riders Association. Yep, yep. And so he sent it to Sean Gleason, who's the CEO of PBR. Sean loved it, and he called, and he's like, I want to license this song. I want to use it for their international our international ad campaign, but I can't have cowboy shit on TV, of right. course. So I was playing a show in the Hamptons in New York, solo acoustic show in September, told the same story, and I was putting my guitar away when I was finished, and this girl came up, and she was like, she's like, you know, I feel like the Lord is telling me that you need to, uh, it needs to be cowboy grit. And I'm like, Dude, that's really good. <laughs> First of all, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus, because it is a God thing, right? But then I'm like, how the hell did I not think of that? You know, that like I'm a songwriter. I should have thought of that word. It was so obvious, you know. And so Cowboy Grit was born, and um, we recorded it. We we and we changed it up enough so if somebody wanted to license Cowboy Shit, they could license Cowboy Shit. PBR is the exclusive rights to Cowboy Grit, and so. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's been an awesome partnership. I love Cole. He's a good dude. He's good. a good man, and he's one thing that I've learned. Like being around Garth and Reba came to one of our shows in Jackson Hole. We got to spend a minute with her. Is these people are incredibly talented, and they work their asses off. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Th th it's not luck that they're famous and successful in what they're famous at. No, no, so no. There's a lot of work yeah. going behind it for yeah. sure. Yeah. And Definitely. there's you know there's a lot of stuff too that's tough. But man, I tell you what, like Cole's brilliant. You know, like, we go to YouTube and look up Cole Hauser PBR. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's uh, it's like a it's like a four minute video that we wrote the music for that's the cool. producer and I, nice. and that's what they use for the international ad campaign. Okay, so, good. Yeah, it's been good. It's been. I I was watching March Madness on in my chair, and oddly enough, I was falling asleep. And my fiance will laugh at that, but um, I was sitting there, kind of falling asleep, and all of a sudden, I heard my uh, my song. On and TV? It, you know, I'm in that like pre sleep. Fog. I'm like, who the hell is playing my song? And I'm like, oh, it's on TV. And so it was one of the commercials during March Madness, and I got to hear my wow. song. Wow, yeah, that's cool. cool. And then I got to go down to AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, for the PBR World Finals. I remember that. And uh, so that that show, that that four minute deal came on, and they're showing it on the big screen, and my song came on. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, there's a couple. I was there alone, and there's a couple beside me, and I'm like, hey, this is my song. And they looked at me like, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's a bunch of cowboy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're like, this middle-aged guy has a song. That's cute. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and I could feel what they were thinking. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, That's me singing. I wrote that song. And they're like, mm, yeah. Uh -huh. Second yeah. level guy, sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So well, you it's gave been me a blessing, yeah. You gave me my next idea for a t-shirt. I'm definitely going to make it's that. It's cowboy sure. shit. Yeah, yeah. Baby, yeah. Let's oh. trademark it. Let's I'm do doing it. it right now. Yeah. Uh, how many more shows for the rest of you? Because we're coming to, you know, it's fall. We're coming to the end of the year. So how many more shows you guys got lined up? So October 5th, we are at the, uh, we're doing a private show in, out in Montana. October 17th, we get to fly back out to New York and do a show with Tunnels to Towers. Jeez. And then if you guys have never been to Jackson Hole in the winter, we're playing the uh, Million Dollar Cowboy Bar over New Year's Eve. And oh. it's uh, phenomenal. I that's mean, Jackson party. Hole's gorgeous. And so, yeah. And last time we played there, that's when we met Reba. Midland was actually at the show. And uh, we did one, we were covering one of their songs. And so we started, you know, one more night, one more round, that right. one. And so as we started it, the three guys from Midland like walked up to this bar and they were watching us. <laughs> I was like, close your eyes, baby. Don't, don't look. <laughs> don't forget the lyrics. And exactly right. <laughs> and so we finished the song and they like held up their beer can or beer bottle to us and then walked off. So wow, that's it was cool. pretty cool. But uh, Jennifer Aniston was there. Jason Bateman was there. So all the famous people go there. It's just awesome. You know, it's, Jackson Hole's a little small town. Yeah, so. and they just want to be normal people, not well, Jennifer Aniston. That's they right. They want to be Jennifer Aniston, the girl at the bar. And that's the Which thing. Cool. There's so many famous people out there, like Sandra Bullock lives out there, Harrison Ford, and they they see him walking around all the time, so it's no big deal. Yeah, it's like Nashville. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Just yeah you know, we, we went to I went to the CMAs a couple years ago, and I had to fly out early in the morning because I had to pick up my son from school, and Lee Greenwood was there, like ushering people through the line because the line was 
really long. I was like, come on, I got to get and on this And people were getting annoyed. I'm like, you guys know who that is? Like, that's freaking Lee Greenwood. It was yeah. crazy. Only in Nashville. Yeah. I know. Lee's like, let's go. Come you, on. You got to move. Let's go. We got a flight to catch. It was wild. Yeah. yeah. And then he walked by everybody, like, in some private thing. I'm like, oh, he's big balling us now, baby. Yeah, it's funny. It was cool. That's why, I said, like, uh, not to get off subject, but it was you never know what's going to happen there. We always tell yeah. people, when you go, be aware Last year at the CMAs, we sent some listeners. They went to Taco Bell. Russell Dickerson walked in at 1230 and ordered tacos. And then two nights ago, Keith Urban's brand new album, High, ran landed today. He just did a pop-up show on Broadway Street. 10,000 people showed up last night. It's so crazy. Good. So you never know. Yeah, during the week, I got to have a billboard down there on the Nashville sign for about yes. three months, and that was so much fun. And so we got to go down there and look at that. And there's, there's still buses wrapped. I mean, we paid for the wrap, and there was only like a three-month contract with it. But people are still sending me photos of it still being wrapped. So they just said, screw it. We're not going to take nope. it off. Yeah, like, like, leave it alone. That's sweet. funny. So if you go to Nashville, look, look for, for the buses. Look I'm for Kurt it. Van Meter. Yeah. That's it. I'm wearing this jacket, actually. There you the go. Bus. I love it. Let's get back to some music. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Kurt Van Meter. Yeah. 